Good afternoon. Oh, I forgot my. I guess it's not going to work if I don't use the one. Um, I'm going to do this more uh, this oh. afternoon a quick review of what are the main things that or the main issues and what are the solution we think is gonna help you through this process. We don't have all the answers, and as I mentioned this morning, don't shot the messenger because we are trying to do the best to help you. Uh, I guess the hardest issue at this point is the healthcare, but remember, we are the administrators. The North American Division and the whole committee review the whole things and they made the decisions. The only thing we do is implement the program. Um, let me see if this works. Uh -huh. These are the main things. I'm not sure we are going to have the time to go through everything because this presentation was uh, put together by a few departments and it's very long. That means uh, we are going to try to go through each one of these topics but it's not going to be extremely extensive. Please feel free to ask if you have questions or if you have any issue that you want me to um, maybe elaborate a little more. But of course, of course the healthcare is the main um, issue. And I'm gonna try, I don't know, how can I make that? Can you click and make uh, the icon work, the blue thing? Ellen put together a small video since she's not going to be able to go through all the um, year end meetings in the unions. Um, we have the short video. She's gonna talk about the affordable health care issues. But let's talk a little bit about the funding program that we are trying to move now. It's kind of a premium but it's not a premium, it's a contribution that is gonna work like the premium. Uh, in order to find out what is the number that you are, each one of the conference is going to put aside per employee, depending on the tier level that the employee is, you have single employees, you have employees that has only a spouse, and you have also whole families, or just an employee and dependents, depending on that level and depending on your conference experience, is going to be an, a standard premium that you are going to pay in a monthly basis. I think Ellen, Ellen is ready to play. Let me let her do her part first. This presentation will briefly cover the impact of the Affordable Care Act, often referred to as the ACA, that was signed by President Obama March 23, 2010. I'll summarize its implementation in broad categories, so let's go over them now. The ACA regulations surrounding benefits and eligibility either are or will be fully implemented by 1-1-2014. Essential health benefits must be included in all qualifying plan designs, which are services such as your preventive care, doctor office visits, outpatient surgery, mental health services, rehabilitative services, etc. Also, the law says that there can be no aggregate lifetime limits on these essential health benefits. Children can stay on their parents' health care plan to age 26 regardless of marital status, work status, or whether or not they have access to their own health care coverage. Treatment for pre-existing conditions can no longer be excluded and preventive care benefits must be covered at 100%. Both pediatric and adult services do have age and or frequency criteria. And you can find the details in the health care plan document on pages 24 to 29. There are federally mandated plan responsibilities, such as the exchange notice that had to be sent to all employees by 10-1-2013. We worked with you on that. The summary of benefits and coverage document allows an individual to easily compare one benefit plan to another in a side-by-side -side comparison. This is available to you on our website. There will be data reporting requirements to the federal government of all employees, not just those that are covered by the health care plan. And as such, ARM cannot report this data on your behalf as we don't have information on your employees not covered by the health care plan. 
However, be assured that as the regulations are defined and the requirements are clarified, ARM will continue to work with you through this process. There are two fees that are assessed per average number of covered lives. The first, patient-centered outcomes fee, funds research efforts. Secondly, the transitional reinsurance program fee basically creates stop loss protection for the insurance carriers coming into the marketplace and taking on all these new lives with unknown risks. This is not unlike your own stop loss coverage. As a part of the employer mandate, the 30 plus hour rule says that any employee working an average of 30 plus hours a week qualifies for employer sponsored health care coverage. This mandate was postponed from 1-1 of 2014 and will now be effective 1-1-2015. This has the potential to have a significant financial impact on your health care costs. Also, there are fairly significant non-compliance penalties levied against employers who do not offer health care to qualifying employees. Qualifying plans must meet both a minimum value test and an affordability test. The minimum value is based on the cost of the healthcare services or the claims, your doctor office visits, etc. Roughly speaking, this means that the plan is responsible for 60% of the cost of the services and the employee is responsible for 40% of the cost. Secondly, qualifying plans must meet the affordability test, which is based on the cost to participate in the plan. In our case, as a self-funded plan, this is the contribution that the employee pays. The regulations state that the lowest cost plan for the employee only coverage cannot exceed 9.5% of the income of the lowest paid employee. As was expected, there has been little to no financial impact by removing the pre-existing conditions clause. There has been some financial impact in extending benefits to the dependents aged 26 and under, but the most significant impact will come from the fees that we spoke of earlier followed by the additional covered lives because of the 30-hour rule. Also, it's clearly documented that the Affordable Care Act will add an additional 4 to 6 percent trend in the normal inflationary trend of 8 to 10 percent, causing health care to have a potential 12 to 16 percent inflation. From 2011 to 2012, the trend for the NAD's health care plan for medical care was 10 percent. If we blend that with the other covered benefits, such as dental, vision, and prescription, the overall trend for the health care plan has been between 4 and 8 percent before the impact of the Affordable Care Act. Conservative projections for 2014 indicate this may exceed 10 percent. In summary, the reality is the Affordable Care Act will increase cost to the NAD health care plan, both in utilization and claim costs. Also, remember, ARM is watching the regulations of health care reform very closely. We are facilitating these regulatory requirements and will keep you updated along the way. We will continue to assist in every way that we can through these changes. Okay. Can I? Okay. He's going to go back. There are three main things that I want to add to this, and is that he has bought it. The premium equivalent fund that I mentioned before, it, the numbers has not been released and the numbers are going to be a specific to each one of the conference. That means Chesapeake Conference may have a rate and Pennsylvania Conference may have a different premium contribution to the program. Why is this? Because is the, the numbers are going to be or has been um, selected based in the experience of each one of you. Uh, the best way that I have to compare this is thinking about workers' comp. You have a workers' comp premium for your region, but it also you also have a modifier that is according to your experience. That means the conference through the five years, and, um, and I think there is one here since I cannot go through everything. Here is an example, it's a real conference, and each one of those bars are what they had to pay every week for the healthcare. You can see that sometimes the bar is really high, and in some instances it's not that high, because it's based on the actual medical expenses that your employees 
had during that week. What is going to be your premium is your average. It's going to be like the black line that is going there. And because every conference is different, um, there is going to be a basic number um, looking at the whole North American division, but then it's going to be a modifier. You may, you may be ending paying a little more or a little less depending on your experience. And what you are going to pay next year, it doesn't have to be that you will have to pay that for all the time in the future. Every year is going to be an analysis to see how your experience is being um, improving or not. And it's not ARM the one that decides this. We have a company that is doing the actuarial work because this is not too easy to predict. But that's how we have come to this number and it was um, very well received in the year end meetings of the North American Division and they approved to go in this direction. You are not going to socialize your premium. It's based on your experience but it's going to give you a, a big flexibility in your cash flow. The other thing that I was going to mention is that due to the increase in the expenses of the healthcare, through the years, we moved from the 20, uh, the 80% that the employee was putting and the 20% the employee was adding to the medical expenses. At this point, it's no 80%. The employers are paying 86%. That brings the program to a very problematic issue, not only for you, but for the future of this program. Because possibly in 2015, what is being considered a Cadillac program, and we do have that because it's supposed to be 80% paid by the employer and only a 20% contribution in the employee, is a tax that is going to come to the employers that pay those higher benefits. And in order to compensate that, if, they, if that tax was supposed to be applied today based on the cost that the North American Division Program had in 2012, remember we have been paying 86% of the expenses? It should have been about 12 million um, $12 million, all the North American division together. We don't want that. That means another thing that we have to do is look at how we can rebalance that program. And I, I think you are aware, well, this is the trend, how we are going in. You are going to have this presentation. I cannot go through each one of them, but you are going to have that. This is what is projected for next year, taking into consideration the increases and all of that for 2014 is just outrageous. And the, um, this has been the modifications in the plan. The deductibles have not changed, and this is what is right now for the next year. In, um, in an overall, I can say that is at least a 20% increase on the participation of the employee it was only uh, $300, uh, the, the annual deductible. Uh, I'm sorry, it was 250 now it's going to be 300 It's about 20% more. In some other places, you will see that it's a reduction in the benefit. Um, like here, for dental and, um, and for the vision, the, um, the deductibles and the per family annual is going to be 70% less and the division is 20% less. All of this, what is what is trying to do is just to balance the program that we are not in the Cadillac program. We want to be in the standard. Um, that's another, um, I'm gonna go a little over here. That's, those are the four tiers. Come on. We want to be in the standard. I don't know how to go back now. Here. If we are in the premium, that is the last one that pays 80, 20%, the North American division is going to have a 40% tax for giving too much to the employers, employees. We want to be in the standard 
that is 7030. The government requests that it has to be at least the basics, 6040. The North American Division wants to be in that middle program where we can offer the employees a 70%, but 30% is going to be in their you know, expenses, deductibles of out of pocket or co-payments. That's how we are heading. And we are heading in 2015 to offer uh, options. That means we are going to have more than one options and we are going to give the employees the opportunity of choosing what option do they want. That means is the conference will stay with the standard 70, 30%, but it may be that young people will say, well, instead of me contributing that much, I want it to be in the basic one. I want to take more risks. I pay less every month, but I know that if I have a serious incident, I have to put more out of pocket then. That those are the options that we are looking for in the future that the conference or the institution is not going to be penalized because you are offering the standard plan, but you have options and your employees can choose one or the other through payroll deduction. I don't know if I was able to um, um, share the, the ideas of where are we heading, but this is just for the healthcare. Yes. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. When I say the North American Division is all the the program, uh huh. It just includes all the institutions that are part of this program. It's based on the benefits that you pay to the employees. If they believe that if you are paying more than what is the standard, you are providing too much benefit to the employee, employees, and that's why the tax come from. It's, it's, like, um, it's like the life insurance. If we provide the employee with 50% thousand for life insurance, it's okay. You don't need to report that as an income to the employee. But if you go above 50,000, the employee is supposed to be taxed for the other 50,000. In this instance, the employer is supposed to provide health care. But if you provide too much, they may think that you have provided a lot more, and then they tax you for providing more than what it, they think it should be. It makes sense? Maybe not, but that's how it is. The truth is that for many years you have heard that the, the Seven Day Adventist has an amazing healthcare program, and it's true. And uh, we are not the only one, but we are one of the few. And that's what they are trying to look. Try not to make those specialty institutions where everything is almost paid for the employee, just making it more, um, I don't know, more responsible or more sharing the expenses in the other side. Um, when we were paying, the North American Division were paying 20% and 80%, 80% and the employee had 20% for massages, it was a lot of people taking massages. When it went 50-50, you know, the numbers went down, and I think that's what the government wants, that you use your health care when you really need the health care, but don't abuse about that. And um, I have friends that works in doctor's offices and this, the companies that sells medicines, you know, prescription, they come and offer the doctors. They often reward to the doctors if you push those medication in the patients. Well, if you have to be buying those prescriptions out of your pocket, you're gonna be more responsible. That means everything has a good and a bad thing. We don't have a saying in this rule. This is a new regulation. And we want to be sure that when that comes in place, the North American division is not in the group that is going to be penalized. That's what we are trying to do, you know, going ahead and be sure that everything is okay. Mike, were you gonna say something? No. Yeah. 
Okay. You know, I, <laughs> I look at him like, okay, let me, let me mention something that has been asked. Do you know today the long-term care is serious? 70% of everybody that is above 65 years old is getting long-term care services. And it's not cheap. And uh, more than eight something millions in the United States are suffering from Alzheimer. And that requires a lot of expenses. Well, at the cry of the North American Division, we have been for about a year trying to look for a company that will provide this service. And this is a short, very short video that the North American Division worked with us to put it together to announce this program. You can play it. Over 65, we need long-term care services at some point. And the average nationwide cost is over $75,000 per year and doubling every 14 years. While most people think of long-term care as impacting only those in senior years, 40% of people currently receiving long-term care services are ages 18 to 64. Most employees think their health care plan or Medicare covers the cost of long-term care. Unfortunately, neither does. We are proud to announce a new and important benefit for active employees and retirees in the North America Division, which is long-term care insurance. Long-term care insurance is brought to you by LTC Financial Partners. This benefit is more than just access to discounted insurance. It is an educational program for you to learn about all your options to protect your retirement savings against the rising cost of long-term care. We want every one of our employees, retirees, and their family members to learn how they can plan for their long-term care. More than that, we want them to put a plan in place in order to accomplish this, we worked with our Adventist Risk Management to find an insurance solution. They have arranged for the services of LTC Financial Partners. Long-term care is an important component of financial planning. Be sure your employees get the opportunity to learn about these issues and plan for their future. LTC Financial Partners has a comprehensive education program to help employees understand their long-term care needs and decide what coverage is appropriate for them. Over the next few months, a specialist from LTC Financial Partners will reach out to you to explain all the benefits of the program. I encourage you to take time to speak with your LTC Financial Partners representative to learn more about how to make this information and coverage available to your employees. It's never too early to plan for the future. In December 10, ARM is going to sponsor a webinar with more details about this. It's not a work for the conference or for the institution. This company will approach you to have your permission to reach the employees. That means it's not going to be something that the conference will have to be, it has to be involved a little bit, but it's going to be more in direct connection with employees. And the only thing they are going to ask is just when you are ready, they are going to ask a few things. And the webinar is going to give you more details about how this is gonna be offered to the employees. But the good thing is that even if you have a parent that is not related to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, but you wanna pay for that, you know, to be sure that if something happened to them in the future, they have the long-term care that they need, you can do it. I mean, it's going to be an individual basis and it's going to be really uh, wide open for different options. Um, I'm gonna go to, um, time is, um, I'm gonna mention the changes in the NAD working policy that has to do with insurance. And the first one is related to the sexual uh, offenders in the church, if I get it there, uh-huh. Um, you know that originally it was a five years. You were supposed to have a chaperone with a person. Um, be sure that um, whatever the agreement was with that local church that the person was uh, already, you know, fulfilling all those requirements. Now it opens up to do periodical reviews 
of that behavior. And during those periodical review, you can extend the term, or you may say, you know, you have not been doing what you were supposed to do, and you are, are not allowed to participate anymore in the church activities or sponsor activities, or that means it's open up to periodical reviews, and this is new. Another thing that was uh, what voted to do a change was to recommend the organizations to consider to buy the equipment breakdown for the institutions in a general, like a blanket. Before we had a master policy, and it was um, each location was supposed to be requesting that insurance. Now we are able to offer that along with the property policy. And each conference in an individual basics, we have the opportunity to consider if you want to have only 10 locations, the 10 locations that historically has been participating in the program, or if you want to extend that as a blanket to the whole conference. To give you an example, one conference that I work with, um, they were actually paying about $5,000 for about 10 A or 12 locations, I don't remember exactly. If they were to have the coverage for the whole conference, it was like about 4,000 more. Mm -hmm. That means you have to consider because sometimes it may be worth it to have a little more and then that is going to be your first year. After that, you don't need to worry anymore because that is going to be part of your property program. I don't know if it makes sense. You know, at the very beginning, you have to consciously accept if you want that or not. I want to mention that the property policy offers a very small limit, it's 25,000. But if there are churches or schools or facilities, and today almost everything is electronic. And it's not only the boiler or the air conditioning, it may be your, your TV equipments, your, um, um, your audio and visual, your computer equipments, everything that may be electronic is covered under this policy. And everything that is a, an, an, a peril that is caused by an accident, it will be covered. Even if it's a stupidity in the part of the operator that you switch the button that was not right and just create an issue, it was an accidental, it's gonna be covered. Um, another thing that we, um, we recommended and a few institutions today are already participating for a year in this policy is the cyber. Um, I guess we have heard too many things about cyber and we know that if we have not been already uh, with a bridge, we may be very close to have a bridge. And it happened, I know a few institutions that they don't come and tell us, but we know what is going on because we have friends in other churches. It's an issue. Even if you broadcast uh, the church services, you may be putting a music that you don't have the right to be using. It's, 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 we are in a very difficult, um, environment, and I'm gonna try to see if um, I can show you, um, can I try to see if I can airplay this? Okay, he asked me, um, since I work with this policy for quite a while, is there, can you help me? It's coming? Oh, okay. I have an application that you are going to help me to find out how much it will cost if you have a breach in your institution. It's ready. Okay. Okay, what are you seeing there? is all the breaches that have taken place here in United States in the last 30 days, okay? And I'm going to um, look at one of them. Well, I guess since I'm airplane, is, is anything, 
You know, it may be like, uh, for example, uh, someone hacked into your system and took password of the people, or um, a malicious hacker from China. It's, it's all of this here in the United States. And it happened all the time. And sometimes you're not aware. And if you, if you look at the very bottom there, it's Bank of America, okay? The password from the people in that bank was stolen. And it happened just last week. That means we are not exempt from that. And let's look now on how we uh, calculate. It's done. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be done, OK? I'm sorry. You can come later, OK? I'm going to show you in this calculator. Um, if you tell me how many people or how many records, for example, you think that is 2,000 records that they can take from your employees and teachers or whatever, it may be only 250. How much it will cost you to pay for those expenses? It's amazing. If they take your social security or whatever, it's even worse. Well, um, it was a pleasure to see you. It's a lot more that I would have loved to say, but the red bag came. <laughs>